Hey, this is Don Priester, and I'm the founder of Fetchmates Dog Walking Service here in New York a City. <laughs> in this video, what I want to do is I want to give you the five most important questions that you must ask your potential dog walker before ever considering hiring them and giving them access to your home. Now, if you're looking for a professional dog walker, this video is for you. If you're not looking for a professional, you're just looking for some random guy on one of the apps or an on-demand service, that's cool, but this is just not for you. You can stick around, it may be informative for you, but it's specifically for people who are looking for a professional dog walker, all right? So when you ask these questions, you will put yourself one step closer to hiring a professional dog walker. Now, I don't wanna ramble, I know your time is limited, so let's get right into it. First question, you want to make sure that they have liability insurance. Ask them, do you have liability insurance? Why is liability insurance important? Well, we're dealing with a human being and we're dealing with an animal. Things happen. So if your dog is playing with another dog and somehow that dog gets injured or your dog gets injured, liability insurance will cover the cost of that vet bill. Or say for instance, your dog walker is filling your dog's water bowl and they forget to turn off the water and they leave your apartment and they flood your apartment, it will cover the cost of property damage as well. So you wanna make sure that they have liability insurance. If this person doesn't have liability insurance, what that means is they'll have to pay these fees out of pocket. If there's a vet bill that's three grand, I guarantee you they are going to bail if they do not have life, uh, liability insurance, life insurance. If they don't have liability insurance, they're not gonna pay it because they're not professional. The fact that they don't have liability insurance and they're in business to provide service for a living being and they don't have liability insurance to cover any uh, accidents or any issues that may arise, which does happen in this industry, they're showing that they're not professional, which also means that they will bail the moment there's an incident and they have to pay out of pocket, which means that you're left paying the bill. So you wanna make sure that they have liability insurance before ever considering hiring them. The next thing that they must have is client references. They must have client references. And when I say client references, I mean it. Client references. I mean real clients, a professional relationship. Not some next door neighbor that they run errands for and they don't get paid in cash, they get paid in meatballs. I'm not talking about that. That's not a real client. You want to have at least, I say, a minimum of two clients. Two people who are paying them on a regular basis to provide service for them. A professional relationship, right? Not just their mother or sister or some next door neighbor. Professional relationship, too. And with that, you want their contact information also so you can contact those people and get an unbiased review of how this dog walker provides service for them, all right? Two, for number three, you want personal identification you want either a state ID or a driver's license. They must be valid and they must be up to date. The reason why is because you wanna make sure that this person is who they say they are. And I've been in this industry over 10 years and it boggles my mind how, whether it was me or my employees or any other dog walker that I know, no one, none of these clients have ever asked for identification. Now this is no knock to these clients. But me personally, I would think that you would ask for personal identification because these are total strangers that you're giving access to your home and you don't really know that they are who they say they are. So I suggest you ask each potential uh, dog walker for either a state ID or a valid driver's license. And oh, also here's a quick tip. This is a great uh, filtering process too. So uh, pay attention and write this down and remember this. So when you ask for their identification, you want to look for a specific uh, reaction. And here's the question you're gonna ask that's gonna uh, give you that reaction. Here it is. Is it okay if I take a picture with your smartphone of your ID? Or is it okay if I make a photocopy of your ID? Now, you're waiting for a reaction. If their reaction is they look uncomfortable and they say something like, uh, well, that's a bit personal, that's a bit intrusive, I don't feel comfortable you taking a picture or uh, making a copy of my ID, then this person is not the person for you. That means they have something to hide. So I mean, really think about it. This is a total stranger. 
and they're asking you for keys to your home, your personal space, right? But yet they feel uncomfortable just giving you a copy of their personal identification. So if they react in an unfavorable way, you know that this person is suspicious. There's something that they're hiding. This is not the person for you. Run far away from this person. All right? This is a great, great tip, great uh, filtering process for a personal identification. So number four is key storage. You want to know where they're storing your keys and who also has access to your keys. Now in this industry, specifically here in New York City, uh, there are three common ways to store keys. One, uh, the dog walker will have the keys on them all the time. <laughs> Even when they're not walking your dog, those keys are still on them and they're walking the street, they have the potential of losing your keys. Uh, I hate that, I hate when I see that. Uh, number two, uh, they will store your keys in an outdoor lockbox, they're about this big, and they're usually locked to some outdoor fixture, uh, like a, a gate or some bike rack or something outside of your apartment, outdoors, which again is something that I don't agree with, I cringe when I see it, because this is someone's keys, this is your keys, they're locked outside. Anyway, I won't get into that. And uh, the third uh, most common way to store keys is if you live in a luxury building here in Manhattan and uh, you have a doorman or a front desk person, your keys will then be left with that doorman or front desk person and only accessible by that doorman. All right, so those are the three most common ways of storing keys in New York City. And if you feel uncomfortable with any of those, tell them, just don't just accept it. Th these are your keys and this is you know, access to your personal space. So if you don't feel comfortable with them having the keys on them all the time or locking your keys in some lockbox outside your apartment on the street, feel free to tell them that. Tell them that you don't feel comfortable with that, all right? And if they have an issue with that, then they're not for you, all right? Number five, a backup plan. What is their backup plan? What's their contingency plan? Again, we're dealing with a human being. Things happen. Your dog walker may get sick. They may have a family emergency. They may have to leave the city, leave the state, whatever it is. They are unable to walk your dog. What's going to happen? Who is going to be there to pick up the slack if they're not there? So you want to make sure that this person uh, has a relationship with another dog walker or another company so that if they're unable to walk your dog, someone will be there to cover those walks so that your schedule isn't interrupted and your dog's schedule isn't interrupted, right? So, and I gotta say this too, is whoever that backup person is, you have to meet them and they should also adhere to this very same criteria that your primary dog walker should adhere to. They should also have liability insurance references, identification, um, and adequate key storage and a backup plan. They should have all of this just as your primary dog walker would. So based on what you've learned here, you're now able to go out and hire a professional dog walker. As long as they adhere to this criteria, you can hire that person with confidence, right? So I gotta say this too, it's like I've been in this industry over 10 years and in that time, I've seen the best of this industry and I've seen the worst of this industry. And a lot of the clients that have come to us over the years have been burned by independent dog walkers and have also been burned by uh, dog walking services. So when I started this company, I started it with the intention of creating the safest, most reliable dog walking service in New York City. And I knew that in order to do that, in order to achieve that as a company, we had to put the client first. We had to make sure that our highest priority is the safety and well-being of your dog. So along with these five points, we've taken it a step further. So bear with me, I know this video is a little longer than expected, but just bear with me, you're gonna like this because at the end, I'm gonna give you a gift, so just stick around. <laughs> Along with liability insurance, what we offer here for additional protection is, honesty bond. We have an employee dishonesty bond. Can you see that? I know my hand rises. Anyway, so we have an employee dishonesty bond. And an employee dishonesty bond is similar to liability insurance, but 
what an employee dishonesty bond does is it covers uh, the cost of any stolen items that have been stolen by the dog walker. I gotta tell you that we've been fortunate enough to never have that issue, and I think that's because we do a phenomenal job vetting uh, potential employees. What we, do, I'll get to this too, is that uh, based on uh, personal identification, we take it a step further, and what we do here is we put each potential employee through a background check. It's an extensive background check. And to add, because really what we want to do is we want to make sure that they are who they say they are, but we don't take that step further by uh, going into their background to make sure that this person is who they say they are based on their address, their phone number, and uh, things like that, uh, where they went to school. Uh, we want to know all of that. So the next step, because we've added an, an additional level of security uh, when it comes to identification, we also run a criminal background check. That's a little, yeah. <laughs> so we also run a criminal background check on all potential employees. And if they pass that, then we take them to the next step and we give them a drug test. And we don't just give them any drug test. We put them through a nine-point drug screening. And what a nine-point drug, nine drug screening is, is, it's possibly the most thorough drug test available on the market right now. Uh, what it does is it, it will uh, detect any illegal substance as well as um, legal prescription drugs. And the reason why we do that is because we want to make sure that your dog walker is 100% present while walking your dog, right? I know you're going to like that. Along with uh, key storage, we have a system in place to make sure that your keys are protected at all times. So unlike other uh, services that allow their dog walkers to take the keys home with them or lock the keys up outside in some lockbox on the street, we don't do that. Here's what we do. I'll walk you through the process. Your dog walker, at the beginning of their shift, they come to the office and they get their key, get your key from the location supervisor. And those keys are in a safe and secure lockbox. So your dog walker goes to the supervisor, gets the keys from the supervisor. Your dog walker then goes to your home, provides service, and provides service for all other clients that they have access to those keys of for that day. So let me back up. So uh, we only give our employees the keys of the clients that they're going to serve for that day. All right, got it? So he goes to the office, gets your keys, go provide service, and at the end of his shift, he comes back to the office, then returns those keys to the territory uh, supervisor, the location supervisor. That supervisor then locks those keys in a safe and secure lockbox within our office, and at the end of the night, that supervisor then locks the office, and that uh, office is not accessible to anyone outside of the supervisor until the following day. So no one has access to the keys because they're in a safe and secure lockbox within the office, and then that office is locked and is uh, inaccessible to anyone outside of the supervisor until the following day. You follow me? All right. So we got that covered. Let's see, we got all of these. Backup plan. Here at Fetchmates, I, I got to say we do not hire independent contractors. All of our employees are actual employees of Fetchmates. And the reason why we do that is because hiring independent contractors um, makes our control over what they do very limited. We have very limited control over how they provide service. So even though it's an additional cost for our company, we prefer to have employees rather than independent contractors. And the reason why we want employees is because we have a proprietary way of doing business and the only way that we can control uh, every single aspect of how they provide service here and provide service for you is to hire employees, okay? So as far as the backup plan goes, things happen. Like I said before, we're dealing with human beings so your primary dog walker gets sick and is unable to walk your dog that day. What we will do, 
we will send one of our other dog walkers, one of our other highly trained dog walkers who are trained in the fetch mates proprietary way of doing business, proprietary way of providing service for you so that uh, that substitute dog walker will provide service almost identical to the way your primary dog walker will provide service. So we never miss a beat, all right? So your schedule isn't interrupted and your dog schedule isn't interrupted because your substitute dog walker will provide service almost identical to the way your primary dog walker will provide service. Now all of this other stuff that I've shared with you, all the insurance and the employee dishonesty bond and we also have client references, I skipped that part, we have client references for you also that you can contact and get an unbiased uh, review of our service. Um, identification, background check, criminal background check, and drug testing. Um, safe and secure key storage in our office that's only accessible by our supervisor. And our backup plan, which is you have a substitute dog walker, who you'll also meet. You'll have every bit of information about that person, their identification, uh, where they live, all that stuff. You'll have everything you need to know about that person, the same way you would your primary dog, uh, dog walker. But we've added an additional level of safety to this service. You're going to love this part because this is where we really shine. Like I said, I've been in this, in this, in this industry over 10 years, and I've seen the worst of this industry. And I still walk around and I see it and it pisses me off. So again, I set out to create the safest, most reliable dog walking service in New York City. So there are certain things that we had to put in place to ensure that we not only achieve that, but we make sure that you're happy as a client. All right. And here it is. You're going to love this. We have a no tolerance policy in place when it comes to outside distractions. What do I mean by that? Here at FetchMates, uh, let me make room here. I don't know if you can see that here. Uh, we have a no tolerance policy in place because we want to make sure that we're giving you the service that you're paying for. So, no cell phones. No phones, no phone calls while providing service. No texting. No listening to music. No eating. No beverages outside of water. So while your dog walker is walking your dog, they cannot talk on their cell phone, text, listen to music, drink any beverage other than water, or smoke while providing service for your dog. If they are caught doing any one of those things, they are fired immediately. And I know it sounds harsh, but remember, we are taking care of your dog and we are responsible for your dog's life in that 30 minutes. So we want to make sure that we are 100% present. And we're not doing this for our own personal gratification. We're doing this for you, the client. So no tolerance policy. If they're caught doing any of these things, they're fired immediately, I assure you. Thank you for staying this long. I know it's been long. And I said at the top of this video that if you stuck around to the end, it was informative, right? Yeah, so you got something out of it. So anyway, so thank you for staying. And as I said at the top of the video, uh, if you stuck around to the end, I will have a gift for you. It's the end, so I have a gift for you. So since you're a responsible dog owner and you're looking for a professional dog walking service, we'd like to help you. Nice to meet you. You can probably gather that we're a professional dog walking service based on uh, what we've gone over here. You can see that we're professional, right? Anyway, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to offer you our service at an incredible discount. Our average client uh, books half hour walks Monday through Friday. That's Monday through Friday, every day from Monday to Friday, half hour walks. And the rate for our half hour walks is $28 for half an hour. That's a lot of money. No, it's not. No, it's not. Considering what we offer, we are a professional service. We have, despite my delivery here, we're a professional service. I'm trying to have fun with this. We're a professional service, and uh, we only hire employees. We don't hire independent contractors. And we want to make sure that you get the best possible service. So we charge a premium. 
But because you've stayed this long to watch this, my gift to you is the ability to join our community and have your dog walked by one of our professional dog walkers at a significant discount. As I said, our rate for a half hour walk, which is our average service, is $28. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to offer you that same uh, service for $25 for a half an hour. So what you need to do at this point now, since you're looking for a professional, either fill out the application on this page or click on the button somewhere on this page, and that will lead you to an application form. Fill that out, and one of our client service representatives will get back to you within 24 hours to then book an in-home meeting with you and your dog to assess your needs. But in order to get that discount, uh, let me erase this. You'll need to type in, in the, uh, there's gonna be a promo uh, field on the application. Type in NYC Pro Dog Walker. <laughs> You'll need to type that in so that way we know, you see that? That way we know that you saw this video and I promised you, I promised you uh, the discount, all right? So please understand that we are a service-based business, which means that um, the amount of service we can offer is limited by the amount of service providers that we have on staff at any given moment. So based on the staff that we have at this moment, we could only take on 21 new clients. That's right, 21 new clients. So I encourage you to fill out that, fill out that form, that application uh, immediately, uh, because once that's, those spaces are filled, uh, you'll have to wait for the next round of um, when we open up our doors to new clients. Uh, and in that time, if you're number 22 and there's no space available, don't worry, don't call our office cussing out our client service representatives or cussing me out, uh, you will be immediately put on a waiting list so that you are then given priority in the next round of uh, new clients, uh, accepting new clients. So again, thank you for sticking around and the gift is a significant discount when booking services here at FetchMate. So fill out the form, the application, and we'll get back to you within 24 hours. Again, make sure that you type in NYC Pro Dog Walker and you will get that discount. So thank you for watching this video, this incredibly long <laughs> video. Uh, I hope you got some value from it. And uh, like I said, we're only looking for 21 clients who are responsible and looking for a professional dog walking service. If you're looking for an on-demand service, we are not that. We uh, only want clients, and again, we have a criteria here. We only want clients who, want, uh, who book static schedules, which means that they have the same schedule every week. Because if you are looking for someone to uh, facilitate sporadic schedules, it makes it difficult for us to then serve you at the highest level. So we're only looking for people who uh, are number one, responsible dog owners, and number two, who have static schedules, who have the exact same schedule every week. So that way we can give you, the client, the best possible service, okay? So, oh, and I gotta say this too. Uh, this video was for you, right? So that you can have a set of standards when looking for a dog walker. But please keep in mind that as a company that uh, focuses on safety and reliability and giving the client exactly what they want, uh, please understand that we also as a company have standards. And just because you fill out an application to become a client does not mean that we will necessarily take you on as a client. So please be mindful of that also because we also have a criteria that we also adhere to. So I will shut up now, but fill out the form and we'll contact you uh, within 24 hours. But please again, put that promo code in New York, NYC Pro Dog Walker and get that discount. All right, so again, this is Don Priester, the founder of Fetchmates Dog Walking Service here in New York City. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I'll fill out that form and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Cling.